Do you know how much money this little bad boy is costing you every single month? Then you may not even know about it. In this video, we're going to talk about how much money goes through the App Store on iOS, that is iPhone, and on Android in the Google Play Store, and how much money you're paying each and every week, or each and every month, or each and every year that you don't know about and you probably shouldn't be paying. The rise of automatic renewals, the rise of free trials that convert into paid subscriptions, as well as bundled services that makes it really easy to lose track of what you're paying for on your different phone. In 2023, a survey by Rocket Money uncovered that 90% of us have at least one app that we pay for on a subscription basis that we totally forgot about. And when we consider that apps cost anywhere from $9.99 per year up to $100 per year, that one app that you forgot about, well, that could be quite costly. Let's not forget, there might be more than one. You might have half a dozen of these things that are sitting there racking up money each and every month or each and every year, and it's costing you a lot. And subscriptions are not easy to understand. They're not straightforward. In fact, have a look at this app right here. This is Camera Plus. This, in its day, this was a great app. Things have evolved a lot since then, and this app nowadays is, is a mediocre app at best. You can get most of the things that this app can do on the phone when it comes out. Things like portrait mode, long exposure, macro mode, they all come now on your camera app. So there's not really a great deal of use for this app. But if you were to go and look at this app today, have a look at this. Look at the numbers on that. $10, $59, $79. Seriously, is it any wonder at all that people get confused about the pricing of these things? For an app that gives you pretty much what the camera app on your phone will do on an iPhone, that's just, that's, that's just nuts. So how did we actually get here and why are we in this ever revolving door of subscription basis? The App Store launched in 2008 and it was generally speaking, it was one-off single purchases of different things. And you might have had some in-app purchases. And that was generally around games or maybe some entertainment stuff. In 2011, Apple launched Newsstand and that was the first subscription-based model in the App Store. And that was for a, an online publication of uh, magazines and things like that. By 2015, more apps came on board like Netflix, Spotify, things like that. Things that actually had subscription basis, but for, for, for everything else really, they were still one-off purchases. In 2016, Apple let everybody who makes an app enter the subscription space. It wasn't no, it was no longer just for uh, entertainment and subscriptions on magazines and things like that. Anyone who made an app could now join that subscription model. Now to help the developers along with this subscription model, Apple charges 30%, roughly 30% of all apps, all app purchases through the App Store. But on a subscription model, they charge the same for the first 12 months, but the second 12 months and subsequent uh, 12 month lots, they only charge the de developers 15%. So it's in the developer's interest to go that way. It's also worthy to note that there is an argument here for developers, especially some of the smaller developers who are a one or two man army in their business, and they're constantly updating these apps. And it makes sense that they have some sort of revenue stream coming in rather than a one-off purchase. But there's plenty of apps out there in the App Store that have absolutely no development once these things are released. We saw subscription models really dominating the Apple's uh, App Store, as well as the Google Play Store. Things like uh, productivity apps, fitness apps, and creative apps like photography and editing and things like that. By 2019, people were starting to get a little bit of, uh, what would we call it, subscription fatigue perhaps, where people were just sick to death of paying for something month by month or year by year on an app that just a few years previously you got from a one app purchase or one off purchase. So people were just getting a bit, you know, getting a bit jack of it. Through the pandemic, subscription models went through the roof. Things like productivity tools, things like uh, workout apps, uh, sub subscription service like streaming services, all these things kind of went through the roof because we're all stuck at home. So subscription models really just went nuts at that time. Apple has since introduced things like notifications for price increases. So you might see that pop up on your phone that a subscription that you have on your phone is going to be increased in price. And occasionally you might see an app saying, hey, this is about to be renewed. But I find that you miss that more often than you actually see that. According to the website Business of Apps, in 2023, the App Store and the Google Play Store had a revenue for subscription models of $45.6 billion. That's with a B. That is more than the GDP of 
well, quite a few countries actually. And that's in subscriptions alone. There's more money to be made. In fact, they say 90%, 96% of revenue through the App Store and the Google Play Store, 96% is subscription services. You've got to wonder how much of that $45 billion is being generated from people who don't actually realize we're paying this each and every month or slash year. We'll probably never know how much of that is being paid for by people who just see it come out of the bank account, go, I must check up on that when I look at the bank account next time and forget all about it. And next thing you know, 12 months later, you're paying for the same thing over and over again. So how do we find what we are paying for right now on your phone. If you've got an iPhone, it's dead set easy. But before we get into that, let me talk to you about today's video sponsor, which is Audio. Audio brings us one simple license for all of your platforms, no headaches about copyright infringement, nothing like that, just premium sounds, premium music, just the way you need it. Do you need cinematic vibes? You've got it. Do you need some upbeat sort of beat music? Well, it's got it as well. It's got every type of genre, mood, that sort of thing, music at your fingertips. If you're not sure what you want really, you can go into the AI on this platform, type in what you're actually shooting, what you're trying to achieve, and it will actually suggest different tracks for you. It's it's bloody good. I have found all the music that they have so far that I've needed, I found it right there on that platform. It sounds good, it's good to listen to, and it fits the content that I create just perfectly. Every time I'm looking for a sound effect, I'm finding it there as well. Let's say you've got a bit of a track in mind and you're using something like Spotify and you go, well, I wanna use this sort of a music tune or track in my video. You can actually link that Spotify song, throw it into the AI on audio and it, was, it will give you a song that sounds very similar to what you've asked it for. And so far, I've tried this many times and not once have I been disappointed with the music that it's provided for me. It's, it's pretty good. If you create online content, you know that music can be very expensive. This here is actually priced very competitively. Annually, you can pay $199 and it's going to give you everything that I've spoken about here so far with the linking of the Spotify tracks, for example, it gives you that in that annual billing. You can monetize this across three platforms, which is, well, pretty bloody good. It's also got a one-off payment if you wanted to go down this path of $199 and that will give you lifetime usage of this platform. It is going to take away a couple of things though, and they are the things that they have to maintain, I guess. And that is some of the AI features, that, that linking of Spotify, uh, that requesting, describing a mood, etc. That there is not covered in the lifetime billing. But if you were to go yearly, and currently I pay about 400 odd dollars a year for the music that I get on this channel. This is so much cheaper than that. And I've been using it now for a month and I haven't found a need yet to go back to where I was before. Very good product, highly recommend it. Let's get on to the rest of this video. On the iPhone, there's a couple of ways that we can do this and they all get you to the same place. The quickest way is to go in through the settings icon right there and then touch on your iCloud account. Come down to subscriptions. It'll open up the subscriptions and there you go. They're the apps that I pay for each and every year on this device and on any device with that iCloud account, that's how you find it. And quite frankly, you just go into there and you go, do I want that anymore or do I not want that anymore? And you can cancel at any time that you want. It's pretty simple. On an Android phone, it's a little bit different. You need to find your Play Store, we'll go into that there. And up the top right hand corner, you've got a photo of your profile. Head onto that there, scroll down until you see payments and subscriptions and then go into subscriptions and there you will find all the things that you pay for on a subscription basis. Go through those, just like the iPhone, cancel the ones that you want to cancel, keep the ones that you want to keep, and there you go, you are sorted. If you're a parent and you let your kids play with your phone to play their games and let themselves just amuse themselves for a while, you should do this on a pretty regular basis because your kids are going to, well, go and purchase things if your phone isn't quite set up the best way it could be for security. So go in there and check that every time. I encourage everyone to do that right now. Go into each one of your phones and check what you're paying for each and every month. Anyway, that's it for this video. We are closing on 100,000 subscribers on this channel. Pretty exciting stuff. So if you like this, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later.